What's the difference between something or somebody that's very strong versus something or somebody that's very stable? Here's what strong looks like. Yeah, I know that's not really He-Man. I, I couldn't find a very good He-Man picture, so this one will have to do. But that's very strong. You know, this guy's very strong because he can lift a lot of weight. And a building that's very strong can also lift a lot of weight. Strong has everything to do with how much weight that structure or that person can lift. The more weight that it can lift, the stronger it is. Stable, on the other hand, is how wobbly something is. If something is wobbly, it can fall over very easily. Are these two structures stable? Ask yourself this one here. What makes this unstable? You know, we clearly we go up to if we go up to this rock here and we touch it, it'll fall over, obviously. But why is that? Ask yourself that question. We're gonna look at it later on in this lesson. Now about this flamingo. If you walked up to this flamingo and you pushed them, don't be pushing flamingos. Be nice to the flamingos. But let's say you are let's say uh, some animal walked up to it. Yeah, let's say an animal and it accidentally brushed up against it. That flamingo's knocked over, right? They are. It's an unstable stance, the way it's it's going right now. And we'll take a look at why that is later on in the lesson. Let's look at strong first. How do you build something strong? Two things. You need strong materials. Go to that lesson on properties of materials, the one where we looked at torsion and tension and compression. Strong materials do not experience tension they don't stretch they don't experience a lot of compression they don't compress they don't squish they don't twist they're very strong they resist all of those forces second thing you need to have strong designs think back to the bridge unit when we built trusses remember how trusses were really strong they made something that was really weak turn into something really strong Let's take a look at that in the next slide. Here's what strong materials resist. Strong materials resist tension. They resist torsion. They resist bending. They don't bend. You take metal and bricks and wood, you can't really bend them. You can't compress them very well. They don't squish. They stay, they stay within their structure. They don't change shape. And they don't shear, which means you can't rip them. These ones here are not going to be very strong materials. A sponge? You can squish it, you can stretch it, you can compress it, you can bend it, you can rip it or shear it. Same with a pillow and same with paper. So these things are not strong materials. These things are strong materials. These are the strong designs I was just mentioning. Look at this building here. You see this building? Let's make it really big. You see what's going on over here? We got trusses. These trusses are going to make this part of the building super strong so that it can lift all of these floors up above it and you see these trusses over here are gonna make this part really strong so it can lift weight on top and that's how you make a strong design you start putting these strong designs in and you've got yourself a very strong now, now you've, it's also using strong materials so you're taking these strong materials this metal and you're making it even stronger by adding trusses now you've got something that's super strong. Here's a rooftop. Here's two rooftops. You see a triangle? A triangle is a pretty strong structure, but you can make it even stronger by adding trusses. You put a truss like that, a truss like that. Now you've got more triangles inside of a triangle. You've got the big triangle here. You've got these little triangles inside. You've taken a strong shape that's being built with strong materials like wood, and you've made it even stronger. And you can see more of these trusses on this rooftop. If we make this big, you can see here, you got these squares. And these squares are made of a strong material. It's made of wood. Wood is pretty strong. And what you do to this wood is you make it even stronger by putting a truss, a truss right in the middle to turn that square into two triangles. And now you've got an even stronger shape. Now, how do you make something stable? We're done with strong. That's done. Now let's look at stable. Stable structures, you got to break into two parts. You got to look at the base, which is the bottom of the structure, and you got to look at the top, which is the very top of the structure. Here's two buildings. 
uh, among the tallest buildings in the world. Here's Burj Khalifa. This is a building in Dubai, the tallest building as of 2014. It is currently the tallest building in the world. And you've got the Empire State Building, which is in New York, which uh, is among the tallest in the world. What they have in common is if you look at their base, it is very wide compared to the top. It is wide. It is heavy. All right. How do we know it's heavy? We know it's heavy because it's wide and it took a lot of metal to make it wide. A lot of metal means lots of weight. So it's really heavy on the bottom because of all that metal that's being used to make it wide. And it's flat. If it wasn't flat, let's say it was a round bottom. You ever sat on a bozo ball? You know those big, uh, not the bozo ball, the stability ball. They roll all over the place, right? Now let's look at this uh, stable structure part number two, which is the top. The top has to be narrow. It has to be skinnier than the bottom. And it has to be lighter. So that's important. It has to be light on the top. It has to be heavy on the bottom. It has to be skinny on the top. It has to be wide on the bottom. If you can get those factors into your design, you're going to have something that's going to be able to stand up on its own and be very stable. It's not going to fall over very easily at least. Let's look at how this applies to humans. Now, anytime you look at a fighter, they always take this kind of a wide stance. They always have one foot in front, one in the back, and they stand really wide. Because when they do that, they've created a wide bottom and a skinny top. This man right here is going to be really hard to knock over if you um, attack him, if you kick him or punch him. He's going to be really hard to knock over because he's very stable on his feet. If he was to stand up skinny and tall with his feet together, he's going to be very easy to knock over. Look at Taylor Hall. In hockey, when you're skating and you're coming into the other team's zone, you want to be very stable in case somebody comes and body checks you. You're going to be stable on your feet. So here's Taylor Hall. He's skating with the puck. His legs are wide. He's very low. See how wide his bottom is? And he's going to be very stable on his feet if he was coming into the zone and some guy comes and hits him. Here's a couple questions to get you thinking a bit. Number one, what makes this structure really strong? Oh, Mr. M, I got this. Uh, let's see, strong is kind of like uh, He-Man, so uh, lifting things, yeah, that's got to be the metal. It's got to be the metal, man, it's the metal. That's what's making it strong. Yeah, but there's something else. You're missing something else. Oh, that's hard. It's the trusses, man. It's the trusses. The trusses and the metal are making it really strong. See, the trusses add strength to the metal to make it super strong. Okay, how about the second question? What makes the structure stable? Stable's kind of like balance. Yep. So what's making this thing balanced so it doesn't fall over? Okay, look. What's making it stable is the really wide bottom and the really skinny top. And because the bottom is so wide and has a lot of metal... It's really heavy and wide, and the top is really skinny and really light. Put those two together, you got something very stable. And when you can make stable and strong at the same time, you got yourself a pretty good design.